from seagulls. This one from Carol, who says it's people that are the menace, need to be fined for litter, leaving chip boxes and packets everywhere. And one more from Tina, who says, I've never seen them like they are at Scarborough ever. They're like giants now. Moving on, if you wanted to take a picture right now, for many it would be easy. Just get your smartphone out and snap away. But it's not always been so simple. As photographer Henry Eden's been finding out, he's been quite literally following in the footsteps of a pair of Victorian brothers by using a glass plate camera to capture the images you see right behind me of England's highest mountains. They are impressive, and Henry Eden joins us now. You were just saying it's uh, amazing seeing them in that size behind us on that screen. That's right, and I think it's in the exhibition they're 10 by 12 inches, which is the same size as the negative, so it's fantastic to see them so large. Yeah. How, I mean, what inspired you to get this camera and to go up mountains to take photographs following in the footsteps of these famous photographers? You did this a long time ago. Well, I, I had access to the, the, the camera, which was owned and used by the Abraham brothers through uh, the Wattdale collection and the Mountain Heritage Trust. And it was, I thought it was interesting to photograph contemporary climbers with a camera that was owned and used by the photographers that were the pioneers of rock climbing photography. Who? Oh, well, yeah, George, George and Ashley uh, Abraham. Yeah. And the camera you are holding right now, that isn't the camera you took up the mountain? No, the, the camera I took up the mountain is, produces a 10 by 12 inch uh, negative, which is which is this size. Um, and this camera is of, of a similar ilk, so it's uh, you know, got, got the bellow, got the glass screen at the back, which you would look through with a cloth over your head. So it's the same sort of style, but this is a lot smaller. This produces negatives. Uh, this size. And that's really the good. one that you use that we can see now. So it's like that one, but a bigger version. A lot bigger, yeah, and a lot heavier. A lot heavier. I can imagine. I mean, that one looks quite heavy in itself. Mm. What's the process? How does it work? Well, but the cameras themselves are quite simple. There would be a, be a lens at the front, something to capture the image at the back, be it the film, and then uh, the bellows in between so you can move it to do the focusing. So cameras themselves are quite simple. So you, you compose it by looking at the glass screen at the back through the cloth, with the cloth over your head, um, and then uh, the camera I use has no shutter, I just have a cap on the end. So I lift off the cap, make the exposure, put the cap back on. Uh, but I only take three pictures at each time I was out because I only have three dark slides which contain the film. So you really can't afford any duds? No, I think that's the thought about plan uh, yeah. previously, you know, whereas nowadays people can snap happy with their phones. Talk, talk us through the ones that we're looking at now, that's one of them. Yes, yeah, so this, this shot is uh, uh, Leo Holding in Langdale. Uh, Leo's a very well known for his big wall climbs, and this is on small boulders in Langdale on a beautiful sunny day. And this is a, uh, a very famous American climber who's uh, spotting her, her partner, Wills uh, Young in Borrowdale. And this is the sort of signature shot, the sort of poster boy. This is up at Wasdale uh, in the Lake District. That's Chris Fisher climbing a very hard uh, route called Nantes to Fleeing Peak. Where were you taking that photograph? We were on a small sort of promontory, about the size of this table, really. Right. Um, it was a three-hour walk to get there, an hour walk along the side of the lake, and then two hours straight up the hillside uh, to set the camera up on a small uh, promontory, looking across onto where uh, Chris was climbing. It's obviously worth it. What's the advantage of using a camera like that compared to using a digital camera? Because you are a photographer. Mm. Well, part of the thing is the size of the is the size of the negative. On a big negative, you can get a huge amount of information. So you can blow them up, you know, as big as you see behind, and you get lots of information. And the camera that I used, um, the lens was made in about 1870, and those old lenses have, have a really beautiful quality of the sort of shades of grey and texture, the way they show a texture. These modern lenses are very sharp and contrasting, so you can lose some of the subtleties, really. For people watching, we're going to show you some of our viewers' pictures mm. at the moment, the pictures they're most proud of, but can you give us some tips for taking a good picture? I think the key thing is to think about where you're going to take the picture off before you maybe lift the camera to your eyes. So you've got an idea of what you want to do. And that's a good way to catch, if you want a sort of uh, ad hoc or a candid picture, if you pick the camera up to your eye, you're giving the, you're giving the game away as to what you want to do. So think about it first and go to plan for then. Well, maybe you can give us some feedback on the pictures mm. we're about to show yeah. you. Uh, this is Mix. Uh, he got in touch with us on Twitter sending this amazing picture of a mandarin duck. And he said it took him two hours to get the shot. What do you think of that? Well, it's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of sitting around for this nature photography. And obviously, it could be that one just wouldn't work in black and white because of the wonderful colours. Yeah, this photograph was sent to us by Les Bird. He says it was taken on a small digital camera, yeah. which is impressive. Yeah, but it's a beautiful picture on a lovely still day. Obviously, the water is still. And that's the great thing about modern cameras on, on phones. And you've always got a camera with you. And Tom sent us this one, which is of a swan at sunset, and that's at Straws Bridge Nature Reserve near Ilkston in Derbyshire. And you really get a sense of the sort of tranquility in an evening. 
even in atmosphere there, don't you? When there's sunlight in the, the swamp, you can sense the evening. Beautiful. Okay, well, we've had loads of them. Sorry if we couldn't show all of them to you today. Um, what, what are you doing next? Uh, well, the, the exhibition has just opened, so there's a sort of sense of relief. Uh, I'm going to be doing some skills workshops in Cumbria about photography, which would be, which would be great to show uh, you know, students how, um, how cameras work. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll have to see, see what right. another idea to come up with. Well, that exhibition is at Keswick Museum, and it opened this weekend and will run until the 12th of May. That's it for today. Louise and Dan will be here from 6 tomorrow morning. They'll be joined by the actor Sean Brooke from Sherlock. John Cable will have the first of his reports from the US.